it's quite niche. Um, I only heard of it because I, I mean, I'm a giant B-movie fan, so I have like dozens and dozens and dozens of B-movies on like different hard drives that I go and reference and watch all the time. It's dreadful and brilliant, which is the perfect B-movie mix, you know, it's like very slow in the action, dialogue is just so stilted and the acting is so bad, but some of the shots are like really gorgeous and the styling is so cool and the choreography is fantastic. <laughs> I mean, I've been a fan of RuPaul since the music in the early 90s. Drag Race, I think, is so fun and it's very smart as a show. It's the kind of reality TV that I really like and the backstories and the performance and the talent. We put in lots of quotes from my favourite queens. Are you a Yas queen? It gets across the tone of what you want to say perfectly. So, yeah, so yeah I mean, guilty. Have you ever done drag? No. Never? No. Considered it? No, I don't have any desire to do drag. I do spend about 99% of my time thinking of drag names, um, but that's about as far as I've gone into that world. Who I think, I'd be, I think I'd be a really ugly woman. <laughs> I don't think you would though. I'd, I'd be gross. I think you'd be a great drag queen. <laughs> I've tried not to think about people that I absolutely have to work with. There's like a ton of artists that I really want to. What I've found is that the best collaborations emerge from friendships. So all of the people that I worked with, I was friends with prior to working with them. Has it changed your relationship with these people though, for the worse in some, I'm not, obviously oh, not no, naming no. anybody's names. No, but. none of the people I've worked with, no. They've all been amazing and they're all friends and that's why I work with them. You were born in 1982 and I feel old actually saying this because I was born way back before that. I'm not gonna say when, although I did tell you earlier. <laughs> Do you know what your number one, what the number one was when you were born? I don't think it was anything that I was particularly drawn to. Do you remember? I think it was Culture Club. Do you really want to Well, it depends me? what week it was. Yeah. What an era to be born in though, the 80s, the early 80s. I mean, it's great. The, the, the shame is that I wasn't old enough to appreciate a lot of the culture, but the joy is when I look back at sort of a lot of 80s movies or listen to a lot of 80s music, I remember with somewhat like sentimental nostalgia, the feeling of what those films were, because that's what television looked like and that's what the radio sounded like at that time. All the movies in the 80s, so many of them had dance sequences, whether they were like relevant to the plot or not really. I became a teenager in you know the mid 90s and that's when you really first start developing you, your specific, unique to you musical tastes and you start experimenting with records that you're buying and you start to listen to like more niche radio stations or whatever and you decide this is what I like, it's not just yeah. what's on the radio. Exposing our knees. Why? I mean, I'm not being funny, it's really cold. Making our lips as plump as we can. Oh, I just years. feel for these people in 20 years where they just look like, I can't say the word, uh, where they really don't look great and you know, that's a part of your face which is very prominent, isn't it? It's never subtle, is it? Making our eyebrows as large as we can. Amazing. And the same with contouring. Yep, amazing. Yeah. I've seen some truly special eyebrows in the last week or two in the UK. I just can't even fathom the process of, of doing it. It's just amazing. Go it's, for it. It's Go a wild. skill, isn't it? Attaching pink pom-poms to everything. I haven't noticed that. Hope to never notice that. <laughs> Not even fluffy mules. You don't know? That's such a disgusting combination of words. Bit of a thing for fluff, fluffy mules. Fluffy mules. I've never worn any. <laughs> Just makes me smile. You I do them. you. Okay. <laughs> and stay well away. I do a lot of fundraising and awareness raising for LGBTQI, you know, everyone on that spectrum, like issues that are related to that in whatever capacity that I can. So to be able to do an event which is celebrating, you know, culture accepting us. And it's important that it's the BBC as well. Somebody was saying the other day that they have family members who are devoutly religious to the point of intolerance towards certain sections of the society. Even the BBC putting on something which culturally decriminalizes the idea of homosexuality made them rethink their stance on it. So the BBC doing things which mark the acceptance of gay rights is very important because a lot of people look to the BBC for social norms and standards and taboos. So it's very important that people like the BBC show gay life as not being a criminal offence or taboo or weird or other. You and they that. did it in a celebratory way, yes. which is great, isn't it? Because it was a party. 
With a serious well, message. You need people to understand the joy which is in the gay community. Like, I, since I came out, have done nothing really but like laugh with my friends and find brilliant people everywhere across the world where I get to do specific DJ sets because of my, you know, it's a, like an LGBT event. So I'm invited because of, well, partly because I'm good at what I do, but also because I'm part of that culture and I help to celebrate it. And you know, there's so much happiness and so much humor and the humor is the important thing. Like the whole event with BBC Radio 2 for that, um, I Feel Love, there was so much joy and so much humor and so much like rapture attached to it. Like that's what I want people to see of gay culture. Yeah. You know, I don't want them to just think that it's mournful and about hardship. Like you absolutely need to remember the hardship that got us to where we are now. But you also need to understand like why you do not write off gay culture because the humor there is like wildly funny. And if you don't understand that that exists, you're really missing out. I hadn't really met um, Alison before that, but she's awesome. Yeah. And you know, I'm a lifelong fan of her voice. I can remember hearing her sing for as long as I can remember music really. She's great. And obviously I know um, other artists that are related to her. Um, Anna is a really good friend so we got the train up to Hull together and we were just like playing each other disco tracks on the train and laughing. She's so great. I've met Will many years before. Um, Mark is really sweet. Like everybody was just so lovely. It was just one of the nicest experiences I've ever had doing something live. It was really cool. Tell us about Erasure. This is such fantastic news. It broke just recently yes. that you were going to be supporting those guys next January I think through to March January to March yeah so I'll be on tour I think it's 29 shows I'll be doing with them wow is that the most you've done in one run I did six weeks with Elton in 2014 and I can't remember how many shows that was that could have been that could have been 30 so it's similar to what I've done before um, it's just so cool it just basically means I get to watch Erasure 29 times which is you know and you'd want fab. to wouldn't you let's face it of course it. you would yeah like, <laughs> it's just not enough really is it I listen to them all the time anyway so why not choreographer we had to talk about the continuous success of this critically acclaimed the reviews were fantastic uh, are they important to you the reviews do you read any of those even if they're not so yes positive? I read them I read them all I, I'm my own manager and I'm also the record label so I kind of have to you have to remember that like reviewers are people I'm a person everyone has different personal tastes so that's like a huge thing and most reviews are not personal one was personal and I know why and I predicted the outcome and it was as expected. Boring. <laughs> Boring. I don't think they're aware of that, but like it was very clear. Um, and the other ones, like some of them, I wasn't expecting to be as favorable. And you know, they were, they were awesome. There were a lot of really great reviews and it made me feel so proud. Um, and the ones that weren't that great were also positive. They just maybe didn't give it like five stars or whatever, or four stars. But it was, it was really nice. And I feel like the fan response much more so has been so wonderful. I've had so many amazing messages and tweets about it constantly and Facebook posts and things like that. Um, I, that. I really feel like I achieved what I wanted to with it. I had a great time making the record. I've had a brilliant time touring it around. I've had so much fun making the videos for the record and you know giving it a continued lease of life and doing the cover albums which tie into it. It's been such a such a lovely fun experience for the last couple of years I say fun a lot I'm yeah. very aware but like that is the crux of it you know I made an album to bring some joy to otherwise rather bleak times that's the most important thing isn't it and you've yeah. got to enjoy what you're doing which you clearly do so you've nailed it really you've ticked all the boxes cool